Now, let me give you an example. I don't lay hands on the sick because they get healed. They get healed because I lay hands on the sick. Now, think about this. If you are going to lay hands on the sick because they get healed, you can't even start because they can't get healed till you lay hands. So you have to believe something before you've seen it so that you can do it. And once you do it now, because faith is an action, okay? And faith, you know, when you make a cake or anything else, you've got all these different ingredients. Well, faith is the same way. Faith has different ingredients, right? Uh, part of faith is hope. There has to be hope there before you can have faith. So faith is part of the ingredients or hope is part of the ingredients of faith. But then another part of faith is action. Okay? There has to be action. Another part of faith is words. There has to be words. People say, well, you know, I just have a personal faith, you know, and, and I, I just I keep it to myself. Okay, then you're not saved. Jesus said, if you don't confess me before men, then I won't confess you before my Father. And he said that with a, with a heart, man believes. Isn't that right? But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So if you, now understand, with the mouth, <coughs> confession is made. Not with the heart. Believing is with the heart. So you believe in your heart, and when you believe in your heart, your mouth has to get activated. If your mouth doesn't get activated, then whatever you say you're believing, you don't believe. So you have to be able to speak. Faith is real simple if you want to get down to it. First off, it has to know the truth of what it is. Then it has to actually believe it. Then it has to say it. Then it has to act it. Then it has to rest. Four stages. Four ingredients of faith. So faith has knowledge of the Word of God. You cannot have faith in God or the more than you know His Word. Just that simple. So you have to know it's written. You have to know what is in there. And so that's the first step, you might say. So once you know it's written, then you believe that. When you believe it, now you're going to say it. Why? Because we believe, therefore have we spoken. Right? So if you believe, you will speak. If you don't speak, you don't believe. And I will even go further than that to say this. If you won't speak it around people you know that don't believe it, you don't believe it. Right? Why? Because faith is vocal, and the part of the purpose of faith is for you to speak and for God to be able to perform what he desires to work in your life as a sign that you're letting your light shine before men, that they will see your good works. Notice works come after the speaking. But first they have to hear it, and then they'll see it come to pass, and then it should cause them to repent and come to God themselves. So you have to speak in front of people who don't believe. Amen? In other words, if you don't do that, what, what makes you any different from an unbeliever? If they don't know you're a believer, you're no different than them. Does it make sense? All right. So, and like I said, I don't lay hands on the sick because they get healed. They get healed because I lay hands on the sick. So before I ever saw anybody get well, first I had to lay hands. I had to believe enough to do it, even though I'd never seen it. And you say, hadn't you seen it through other people? Yeah, but not through me. And it's easy to believe God can use other people. It's always different when it comes down to you. Right? You say, Curry, how do you know that? Check my phone. Why? Everybody wants to get a hold of me because they have more faith in my faith in God than they do in their faith in God, which is what I'm trying to eradicate. I'm trying to make sure you have as much of faith in God as I do. More hope. Amen? Because I may need you someday. 